Hello, everybody, and welcome to part two in this Python chat app using sockets tutorial series. In this video, what we'll be doing is working more on this client script. We'll be coding out this list messages script, and then we'll be deploying this to Linode on a Linux virtual private server. With that said, let's dive in. As a reminder, all of this code will be linked in the description in a GitHub repository, so feel free to reference that. So what I would like to do now in this client script is I would like to make this a little bit nicer and more user friendly so that rather than us having to actually, uh, you know, code all out, code all of the messages out that we want to send in here and separate them with inputs and all of that, I want to make it so the user themselves can just type in messages in the console and those will be sent to the server. So to do that, what we're going to do is create another function here. I'm going to delete actually all of this. I'm just going to call this start inside of here. What we're going to do is we're going to start by asking the user if they would like to connect to the server. So I'm going to say I guess answer is equal to and then this will be input and we'll have our prompt here and I'll say, would you like to connect question mark and then we will tell them that they can answer with yes or no. And If they type yes, then what we will do is we will connect them. If they don't type yes, then we will just stop. So we're going to say if answer does not equal and in this case it's going to be yes and we will actually do answer dot lower just to make sure that we get the lowercase so that if they type all capitals yes or yes with a capital y or something this still works and then what we will do is this is not the case is we will just return from this function which means we will just stop and we won't even bother connecting now if this wasn't the case so this if statement didn't run what we'll do is we will connect them so we will say uh connection is equal to connect like that and that will give us the client here. So now we can start sending messages. So then what I'm going to do is have a while loop here. So I'm going to say while true. And what I'm going to do is ask the user for the message they want to send. So I'm going to say uh, MSG is equal to and then input like that. And we'll just say message colon space. Uh, and then we will let them type in the message. Then what I'm going to do is actually just put a little bracket here and say Q for quit, which means if they type Q, then we will disconnect them from the server. So now after they type this message, I'm going to say if MSG is equal to lowercase Q, then what we want to do is disconnect them. So all that means is I'm just going to break out of this loop and I will show you how we can disconnect them. But uh, actually, before we break out of this loop, sorry, we're going to say send and we're going to send to the connection, the disconnect message. So actually, now that I think about this, let's not do this here. I think it makes more sense to do it at the end. Let's break out. And then after we are done this while loop, we will just send the disconnect message. So if for some reason or some other reason we exit out of this while loop, then we will just uh, send the disconnect disconnect message at the end to make sure uh, that we do cleanly disconnect. Now, if that's not the case, then all we need to do here is simply say send connection and then msg because inside of here we're already encoding and sending the message so i think that's all we need now i'm just looking at my notes here to make sure i'm not missing anything because this seems really simple uh but that's all we need to do here inside of this client so now what will happen is when we run this client script we will start the start function down here that will ask the user if they would like to connect if we type yes it will connect them and then they can start typing messages and sending them to the server so let's actually try this out. My server is already running on this uh, script here on my left hand side. Now I'll run the client. Would you like to connect? Yes. And it should say here that we got a new connection. You can see it does say new connection. And now I will just say hello. Notice the message hello comes in. I'll say what is up? What is up comes in? How are you doing? Question mark. Boom, it comes in. So this is indeed working. Now, if I type Q and I hit enter, ah, we seem to have gotten an error. So what was the error here? I don't know uh, what the problem actually was. Uh, I'm going to have a look and see, but it did get the disconnect message. So that's strange that we would have got that. So I think potentially the problem is that right after we sent this disconnect message, this script ended. So I think we need to wait for a second before we send or before we stop this script so that the server has time to respond to this disconnect message. So what I'm going to do is have an import here. I'm going to say import time and then right under this disconnect message, I'm going to say time dot sleep and I'm just going to sleep one second. Now, after we sleep here, we'll print disconnected. And the idea here is that we'll just wait one second so that 
we don't get this error and the server has a second to actually disconnect us before our script just ends. So let's try this again. Let's uh, reconnect with the client. Would you like to connect? Yes. Uh, we should see here that we get a new connection. We do. Now let's just type a few things. Hello. Uh, you know, what's up now, if I press Q and hit enter, notice it says disconnect, we get the disconnected message and then there was no error here. So that's all we needed. We just need to sleep for one second just to make sure that the server had time to respond to us. Awesome. So now that we've done that, what I'm going to do is code out this list messages file. And what this file is going to do is just show us all of the messages that are being sent to the server. So what we're going to do is actually copy this entire first uh, 14 lines of our client.py file paste them inside of here. So now that we've got all of this code copied in, what I'm going to do is show you how we can use this client because this is going to be another client of the server to just listen and receive all of the different messages because here on the server, right? Like we're receiving messages from the client, but that also means that the client can receive messages from the server because we're sending messages to every single connected client um, every time a message is sent. So technically, this client here is receiving messages. We're just not doing anything to receive the messages. But for list messages here, what this client will do specifically is it won't send any messages. It will just read out all of the messages that are received. So all we have to do since we have this connect function here is we'll define another function. We can just call this one start as well. And this one, we're not going to program to cleanly exit or anything. We'll kind of just say, all right, when you want to stop reading the messages, you can just close the terminal window and we can deal with that issue um, on the server. But what we'll do here is say define start. We'll say while true. And actually before that, sorry, we'll say connection is equal to connect. So we will connect to the server. And then what we will do is say connection dot receive and we'll say 1024 and then we'll decode that using the format and we'll store that in MSG. So MSG equals connection dot receive and then we'll just print out MSG. Now, since this client isn't sending any messages to the server, uh, we don't really know when this client should stop, right? There's not really any idea of when we should disconnect this client from the server. So there's not really a way for us to cleanly exit this client or cleanly disconnect. So you're going to see what will happen is when we exit out of this client here, it will just kind of pop up a little error on the server saying that we didn't receive the disconnect message or whatever. That's fine. I mean, there's not really a way to get around that for this implementation. I'm just trying to show you really easily how you can receive different messages. Now, if you were actually writing, you know, like a production level application, you would want to make sure you're cleanly exiting and you'd have to come up with a clever way to do that. Uh, but it just involves sending that disconnect message. The idea here is we just don't know when we should send that message. So anyways, all we'll do here is we'll just run this start function. And what this code will do is Quite literally just sit there and it will just print out any message that is sent to it from the server. So it's not going to have the uh, like new connection messages and it's not going to have the uh, server started message and stuff like that. It will just have these, right? So any messages sent by the different clients. So to illustrate this, I'm going to create a third terminal window here. Hopefully you guys can see all of this. Again, all I wrote was just this start function and we just ran this. Everything else was from the client file we already had. So now what we'll do is we'll run the server. So let me see if I can actually quit this server. I guess control C no longer works. Let, let's just close this terminal. Let's make a third one. Let's run the server. So we're going to say Python server.py server started. Let's run the client. So Python client.py. Would you like to connect? Yes. Let's run the other one. Python list messages.py. Now notice another uh, client connected. So now what we're going to do is in our sole client here, I'm going to say hello and notice that it shows up on the server, but it also shows up here for this list messages, uh, I guess, file client that we have running. So now we're going to get even crazier. I'm going to create another client. Uh, this is actually correct. So let me just see if we can even separate and figure this out. So server is on the far left. Uh, client one is on the middle left. Client two is going to be on the middle right. And then the thing printing out all the messages is going to be on the furthest right. So let's run another client. So Python client dot pi. Would you like to connect? Yes. Notice we got another connection. Now we'll say uh, yo. And now yo pops up here. Notice we have a different like unique like port number or identifier or whatever this thing is. And uh, it's showing up on the server. So now we can just type messages. Hello. Hi. Yes. What's up? Uh, testing. I see you. 
this is cool. And all of these messages are showing up here in the list messages file. So that's all I want to show you. Let me uh, quit out of here. Notice we get the disconnect message too. Let me quit out of this client. Everything works. We get the disconnect message. But now you'll see when I actually exit this terminal that I'm currently on uh, that uh, I guess nothing happened. <laughs> OK, I guess it's because it didn't get the disconnect message. Ah, There we go. So now you can see the exception appears because we didn't cleanly disconnect from the server. So now we can just close all of these. Uh, and that's all I need to show you for the actual code walkthrough. So again, this is the list messages file. This is the client file right here. I'll kind of scroll through it so you guys can see everything. This is the server file. And now what we're going to do is take this server and we're going to put this onto a Linode virtual private server. Then we are going to set it up so that over the Internet, so we don't have to be on the same network. For example, what we're doing right here, you have to be on the same network for it to work. And then we will use the client and the list messages file or scripts from this computer to communicate with the server. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open up my Linode dashboard. So I'm here on my Linode dashboard and a quick reminder that if you do not have a Linode account to sign up for a new one from the link in the description and you can claim $100 in free credit. Now, I also just wanted to mention to you guys, if you are looking to learn more about Linux and Linode in general, I actually teamed up with Linode to make a series on Linux called Linux for Programmers that discusses all kinds of things like FTP, uh, how to actually connect a domain to your Linode, how to run a web server on your Linode. So definitely check that out. There will be a link in the description and that will bring you to my channel where I have those videos. Anyways, what we're going to do here is obviously open up your Linode dashboard after you've created your account and claimed your $100 in free credit, and you're going to press create a new Linode. So create Linode. And then what you're going to do is choose your distribution. Now, if you are familiar with Linux, you can kind of use whatever you want. Quite literally, all we're going to do here is spin up a server, figure out what the IP address is, and then copy and paste the code over and just run the Python script. So if you know how to use Linux and you know how to run a Python script, you probably don't even need to follow along with this too much. I would pick a distribution. I'm going to pick Ubuntu. Uh, choose your region. This would be the closest to you. So I'm going to go Toronto, Ontario, and then choose your plan. Now, all you really need is the Nanode plan. This is the cheapest plan from Linode at $5 a month. Uh, this is not a very intensive application. But of course, if you wanted this to be even faster and handle hundreds of thousands of clients, then go up to a, uh, a better plan. Once you have that, create a label for your Linode. I'm going to call this chat app. And then you need a root password. So I will enter my password here and not tell you what it is, although apparently it is weak. So we'll see if it actually lets me use that. Uh, all right. So let me create this Linode. Looks like my password is no good. So I'm going to create a new password. And there you go. That one is better. All right. So now I have created my new Linode. This is going to take a minute to boot. Once it is finished booting, I will be right back. All right, so now my Linode is booted up. I'm going to make a note of my IP address by just copying it to my clipboard. You should do that as well. Now what we need to do is SSH into this machine. So if you are on Windows, you can use a free tool called Putty to SSH into your machine. That is the kind of walkthrough I'm going to show you here. If you're on Mac, how you can SSH into your machine is just open up your terminal and then type SSH and then your user, which is going to be root and then at the IP address of your machine. And that should allow you to get in. If you're on the Lish console, then you can use this command right here. Uh, they're both they both should be provided in kind of the main page of your Linode. Uh, anyways, we're going to need to download Putty. And before I do this, I will actually quickly mention that I have an entire guide on how to SSH into a Linux machine on my channel. Uh, that is in the Linux for Programmer series, which again was teamed up with Linode to create. That will be linked in the description so you can see how to do that. If for some reason this explanation is not adequate for you. Anyways, this will be linked in the description as well, the link to Putty. Once you download Putty and install it, you're going to want to open this up. And then what you're going to want to do is connect to your Linux machine. So to connect to your Linux machine, what you do is you go to the host name or IP address uh, little box here or input. You simply input the IP address of your machine, which we copied from the Linode dashboard. You make sure SSH is selected, keep the port at 22 and simply press open. You're going to get some uh, little message box that says something like the host key is not cached. Just go ahead and press yes. And then what it will do is it will bring up this putty window. Now, my text is kind of small, so I'm just going to relaunch this with a larger text size and then I'll be right back. So that's better. I've now got some larger text here for this putty console. Uh, if you were wondering how to do that, you can go to the appearance window in putty and just change the font size. That's what I did. 
Anyways, once you get login as, you're going to type in root, and then you're going to type in the root's password. The password will not appear when you're typing it in, so just make sure you type it correctly. Uh, I typed mine in. This should sign me in, and there we go. So now we are in the Linux machine, and now what I will do is show you how we can actually run this server. So to do this, all we need to do is actually just create a script called server and just run it. There shouldn't be anything we need to install. Uh, Python should be installed on your Linux machine by default. So what we're going to do is say nano. We're going to say server.py. This is a text editor in Linux. We're going to create a new file called server.py. And inside of here, you'll just see like a blank, you know, window or whatever. Now what we're going to do is take all of the code from Visual Studio code for our server. And we're just going to copy all of this code right here, and we're going to paste it into this nano window. The way that you can paste this if you're on Mac or Windows, I believe, is you just right click on your mouse and it should paste all of the code into the nano window. And now if I use my arrow keys, you can see it is all in here. So now the only change we'll have to make here is where it says server, we're going to change this to the public IP address of our machine. So the public IP address of our machine, again, you can find, find from the Linode dashboard. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to paste it in just by right clicking. So now we are going to run the socket on this server IP address, which is the IP address of our machine. Awesome. That should be all we need to do. We might need to change the port, although I think this should be fine. And now what I'm going to do is save this file by hitting control S. I'm going to exit out by hitting control X. And now what I will do is I will run this server. So I'm going to say Python and then server.py. And OK, so Python was not found. I guess we do need to install Python or maybe we just have to use Python 3. Uh, so we'll say Python 3 server.py. And there we go. The server has been started. So I just had to use Python 3, not Python. I always forget on Linux, uh, you have to have the three because they have Python 2 installed as well. All right. So now this server should be running. I will kind of make this a little bit smaller on my screen but that, so that we can still see it. Now I'm going to open up VS Code. And in fact, this is going to be difficult to see all of this. Let's put VS Code over here. Let's put the server over here to the left. Let's open up our terminal in VS Code. And now let's just run our client. So I'm going to say Python client.py. And I just realized before we do that, we have to change the IP address of the socket that we're connecting to. So if we go to client uh, dot pi here, we have to change localhost. <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. And I'm just going to actually quit out of here uh, to be the IP address of our server, which is this. So now I've changed the IP address. While I'm here, I'm going to change it in list messages as well. So let's do that. And now let's run client.py. So Python and then client.py. Would you like to connect? Yes. And notice we got a new connection on our server. So now let's type a few messages. So let's say hello. Hi, test. Is this working? And clearly we can see we are now connected to something that is hosted over the Internet, not on the same local machine. Uh, and again, this is like an SSH window, obviously. All right. So now if I quit, I press Q, we disconnect from the server. We have now disconnected and all is good. So now let's try it out with list messages. So what I'm going to do now is say Python client.py. I'm also going to split this window. I'm going to run Python list messages.py. Notice a new connection has been added. We will now join again from this client. And now if I type hi, notice that message is appearing in both of our windows, right? So it's showing up here uh, on the server as well as in list messages. Say hello, test, so on and so forth. But let's now run another client. So let's say Python client.py. Yes, we'll say new client. And now this middle screen will show us all of the messages. So hello, hey. How are you doing? Good. And then we'll just have a little conversation. Glad to hear that. So that is actually all I needed to show you for this video and for this two part series. So again, a reminder to make sure you sign up for a new Linode account and claim that $100 in free credit. If you want to learn more about Linux and specifically all of the information you should know about Linux as a programmer, make sure to check out that series that I've been referencing that will be linked in the description. All of this code will also be in the description. And again, hopefully you found this helpful. So that is going to conclude this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to myself and to Linode, and hopefully I will see you again in another YouTube video.